Let's pray together. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you very much for this Congress. We bless your name because you have granted us journey mercies and all of us are here. Thank you, Lord, because we have the good news to share. This good news will gladden every heart and this time you build us up in your word in Jesus' name. Amen. We are praying, O oh Lord, that this will be a refreshing moment in your presence. And we pray, Lord, that you'll do great, mighty things in everyone. And you'll so strengthen us, so energize us, so empower us, so prepare us for the ministry ahead in Jesus' name. Amen. Pray, Lord, that this year will be a fruitful year, Amen. a fulfilling year. Amen. And your fullness will be abundant in our lives in Jesus' name. Amen. We're asking, O oh Lord, that your hand will be upon us. You show us the glory and the vision of heaven. And we will do your work effectively this year. And this work will prosper in our hands in Jesus' name. Amen. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You can sit down, please. I welcome every one of you to the Leadership Strategy Congress this year in Jesus' name. Every year in January like this, we come together and we call it Leadership Strategy Congress. It's a congress, a gathering that brings the people of God together. And it's a leadership congress because all our leaders are brought together. Our overseers, our pastors, and our sectional leaders in various areas of the world. And it's a time to come before the Lord, think about what we've done in the past, and think about the object and the project before us this year, so that in the strength of the Lord, in the power of the Lord, we can move ahead and get the work of God done. This time, we're looking at a series that is the things I'll be sharing with you. We have other ministers, of course, that will be sharing along with me. But the things I'll be sharing will be coming from the mouth of the Lord Jesus Christ himself. And we're going to be taking a series in Matthew chapter 5. Tonight, we're starting with Matthew chapter 5, verses 1 and 2. Learning to grow in his presence. Actually, the theme of our congress this year is growing in his presence if you look at ephesians chapter 4 ephesians chapter 4 you'll see the theme right there ephesians chapter 4 verse 13 till we all come all of us till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the son of god unto a perfect man unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of christ if there is any desire in the heart of a child of god if there is any purpose in the mind of a minister of the gospel is to come near and near and near unto christ until we come to the measure of the stature of christ if there is anything we're asking for in this new year it is that the lord will bring each and every one of us into the fullness of the measure of the stature of Christ. As you think about, and then he talks about, in the unity of faith. Can I just remind you as you look at that word, unity. I just discovered that, I told you already in the study, that we had on Paul the Apostle, that those major things that happened in his life, you'll find the faith and the happiness and the hardiness, as well as the obedience and the godliness, you'll find I at the very center of it. Would you be conscious when you read the Bible from now on, when you come across a word, and then you find I at the center of that word, in the unity, look at that word, unity there. That unity there, you have the center, the center letter there, as the I. As the I. If we are going to be united together, the onus is on you. The responsibility is on you. It is what you make of it that will give us either the unity or this disunity. If we're going to be united together, it depends on the I at the very center. And I'm going to say at this very time now, the place where the I is standing. It's actually going to show whether we're going to be together or we're not going to be together. You're going to do an assignment now. Write the word united. The word united. 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 Now, shift that eye there. Shift it in front and write 
another word just the same word just remove the eye from there and put it from behind t and put it in front of t what do you have again untied if we're going to be untied divided scattered is the eye you see the eye makes a difference and where you're standing makes a difference if you will make up your mind that you are interested in the unity of the body of christ and then you put yourself where you stand as an agent of unity and then it says until we come in the unity of the faith and then we come to the knowledge of the son of god we come to a perfect man unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of christ in verse 15 in verse 15 but speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things that's our desire that's our goal that's our plan and that is what we want to see in our congress here and that is what we want to see in our ministry that's what we want to see in the church that will grow up in him in all things which is the head even christ and as we come together and uh, we are talking about learning to grow in his presence in proverbs chapter 9 proverbs chapter 9 and I'm reading to you from verse 9. Proverbs chapter 9, verse 9. Give instruction to a wise man, and he will yet be wiser. Oh, we're leaders. Well, they have some level of wisdom, some measure of wisdom, and some level of knowledge, and some level of effectiveness in the ministry already. And yet we come together to learn. Even though we are wise, we can still learn. And it says to give instruction to a wise man and it will yes be wiser teach a just man and it will increase in learning we're just and we're justified we're people of god we're ministers of the gospel and we're teachers of the word of god the lord has committed a lot into our hands and yet we can still be instructed and when we're instructed like that we increase in learning the fear of the lord is the beginning of wisdom and the knowledge of the holy is understanding for by me thy days shall be multiplied this of thy life shall be increased that's why we've come together and we want to learn in the presence of the lord jesus christ come back to matthew chapter 5. i want to remind you that the last prophet spoke 400 years before this time between malachi and matthew between the close of the Old Testament and the opening of the New Testament, before, between the appearance of the last prophet in the Old Testament and the appearance of the Son of God, you have a period of 400 years. It's 400 years of silence. Then Jesus Christ came and he broke that silence. He came with revelation from God. He came with knowledge from the lord and he came to reveal god's word and god's will to his people he came to save yes and he came to lead us to the fullness that we can have in god he was savior he was lord and he was teacher his teaching brought spiritual life and brought spiritual growth before matthew chapter 5 actually jesus christ had been calling people to repentance and had been calling disciples after him and many people have actually submitted and they have yielded to the lord look at matthew chapter 4 reading from verse 17 from that time jesus began to preach and to say repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand the lord had been busy going everywhere and preaching the word before he came to matthew chapter 5 and in this matthew chapter 4 he went to the places all places different places and went to people different people calling them repent repent because you see really there is nothing that the lord can teach before repentance before a person comes out of death into life what can you teach a dead man how can you teach a dead man to grow but you see call them to turn away from sin because sin is a very recent and the cause of spiritual death and he called them out of that death and to come into life and as they were repenting they were coming into life they came out of condemnation and he came into life eternal and then in verse 18 and jesus walking by the sea of galilee 
So two brethren, Simon called Peter and Andrew's brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishers. And he saith unto them, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. And straightway they left their nets and followed him. They came out of darkness and came into the light. They came out of sin and they came to the Savior. They came out of death and they came to the light. And now that they came into life, he could teach them. Can I speak something to you as leaders in this church? You have a teaching ministry. And teach and teach. How can you just be teaching without evangelizing? Bring them to life. If they are dead in sins and trespasses, there's not much you can teach a dead man. Preach the gospel, the good news that makes them to come out of death and they come into life. We're told in verse 21, and going from thence, he saw all the two brethren, James, the son of Zebedee, and John his brother, in a sheep with Zebedee, their father, mending their nets, and he called them, and they immediately led the sheep and their father, and they followed him. Actually, it means they left the past. And when the Lord calls anybody, he means to leave the past, whatever it was in the past, the sins of the past. The wrong lordship in your life in the past, the negative authority in your life in the past, and the destructive things that you had in your life in the past, it makes you to leave the past. And then you face the Lord now. Where do you go? Where Jesus is going? Follow me. I'll make you fishers of men. And then we're told in verse 23, and Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing all that were all manner of sickness and all manner of disease among the people, healing for the body and preaching for the soul and teaching for their mind and spirit. You see, it taught the whole man. And as he was doing that, he was preaching to them, he was healing them. Not just healing, not just healing, he healed them, that's for the body. But then he enlightened them. He showed them the way of the Lord. He preached the good news and the glad tidings, the gospel unto them. He taught them. He preached unto them. And his fame went throughout all Syria. And they brought unto him all sick that were taken with diverse different diseases and torments. And those that were possessed with devils. And those which were lunatic. And those that had the palsy. And he healed them. And there followed him great multitudes of people they have followed him great multitudes of people that's what led to matthew chapter 5 multitudes had believed now he taught the disciples he taught the multitudes he taught the people three categories of people one he taught his disciples two he taught the multitudes three he taught the people matthew chapter 5 i'm reading from verse 1 and seeing the multitudes, he went up into a mountain. And, they, and when he was set, his disciples came unto him. And he opened his mouth and taught them. He opened his mouth and he taught them. When he finished the teaching, we read in Matthew chapter 7, verse 28 and verse 29. And it came to pass, it had ended these sayings. The people... That's the people they taught. The disciples, the people. The people were astonished at his doctrine. For he taught them as one having authority, not as the scribes. And here we come to the presence of the Lord. And we are disciples of the Lord. Disciples are learners. And it's disciples that become apostles. You cannot just jump from being a sinner being an outcast being somebody outside the commonwealth of israel and ah uh, here you are you become an apostle no you get converted and then you become a disciple of jesus christ he instructs you he develops you he trains you and then eventually you become a saint one that's an apostle they came from being disciples to apostles i pray the hand of the lord will work and mold your life this congress in jesus name in his presence we learn all that we need to live and to grow into him i divide the message to three parts number one learning in his presence learning in his presence number two leaning 
on his promise leaning on his promise you see when we learn we need to lean on him because what can we do how can we carry out the teaching of the lord except we lean on his promise and then number three living by his precept living by his precept the reason we learn is to leave it out number one now learning in his presence i come to matthew chapter 5 begin verses 1 and 2 and seeing the multitudes he went up into a mountain now there is uh, there's no uh, nothing secretive about that uh, what it generally what it meant normally is that there's a large crowd and if he was on the plane along with them they will not be able to see him so he needed to climb up to that mountain so that everybody will be able to see him isn't that the concept where we always raise the pulpit above the congregation that's the reason why so that wherever you are on the right in front on the left everywhere you'll be able to look up and see somebody that is at a higher plane physically and naturally that's why he went to the mountainside mountain top and then when he was said when he was said orderliness you see when you're teaching for the people to take in what you're teaching you, you need to put everything in order he himself was said he himself was settled he himself was well placed he himself settled down and then now he was ready to give the word unto the people what a great lesson for us if the people are going to learn from us we ourselves must be set we must be settled we must be orderly and then the congregation too there'll be that searching there'll be that orderliness and then we're told as uh, uh, we continue with what the lord jesus christ did and his disciples came unto him what idea do you have here and uh, you have a multitude and then you have the disciples and his disciples came nearer you know sometimes it will it depends on actually what we're looking for and there you have a large multitude but you see all the multitudes of it they will not become apostles the multitudes you have to go from being part of the multitude single yourself out respond to the message of jesus christ become converted become a learner become a disciple and then while you're learning soaking it in and taking it in eventually you become an apostle and those disciples they came away from the crowd and then they came near they wanted to see their lord they wanted to hear their lord they wanted to take in the word they wanted to soak in the word that's why they came near they came near unto him he didn't tell them to do that they did that themselves the way you move will show the passion in your heart and the way you draw near will show the desire what you are looking for elijah did not tell elisha follow me elijah did not tell elisha get close elijah did not tell elisha separate yourself from all those 50 sons of the prophets and get near stick to me i have something to impart unto you it was elisha himself that drew near stay here i'm going to the other place i will not leave you your soul leaveth the lord leaveth i'm not going to leave you it was the passion in his soul the desire he wanted something and here we are the congress if you really want something and you want the lord to deposit something in your heart it will show in your attitude it will show in your desire it will show in the way you draw near to hear the word of god and you soak in the word of god and then he opened his mouth and he taught them now when he taught them the word taught is from the word teach the word teach is a verb and it now is the teacher you see we have a teacher and he taught teaching them he taught them and we know jesus christ it's not just that he's savior yes he's savior it's not just that he's lord yes he's lord he's teacher too and look at that in the scripture and he accepted he was teacher we look at john chapter 3 in john chapter 3 we're looking at verse 2 and the same came to jesus by night and said rabbi master teacher we know that thou art a teacher we know it thou art a teacher and he said he was a teacher of a different level of a different anointing of a different understanding of a different impact we know thou art a teacher come from god what kind of teacher can help you to draw you to god 
to link you up with God, to associate you with God, and to bring the power of God and channel the power of God into your life. It's a teacher that has come from God. I don't like to listen to a teacher that God is not with him, that God is not giving him inspiration. God is not giving him understanding. God is not giving him revelation. God is not giving him, it's not influencing him. I want to see under a teacher that God is with him from the impact he has on my life, from the influence he has on my life, from the revelation he gives me. God is with him. I want to stick, stay close and stick to a teacher that I have the proof, I have the evidence. God is with him. This is a teacher come from God. That was Jesus Christ. And then we're told in Matthew chapter 22 the kind of teacher he was. Teacher, yes, he was that. In Matthew chapter 22, verse 16, and they sent out unto him their disciples and with the Herodians, saying, Master, we know that thou art true and teachest the way of God in truth. That's why they listen to him. And that's why we need to listen to him. He is teacher. Yes, he's savior. Yes, he's Lord, but he's teacher too. And he teaches the way of God in truth. Neither carest thou for any man. I, I don't like a teacher that, you know, will be so much concerned with what people say that will not tell me the truth. Here I come and my heart is open. Here I come and I'm tender. Here I come and I say, tell me everything you want to tell me. And then the man that, is thought, that ought to teach me is afraid of the people around him. I want the truth. And then he's pulled here and there and he's a timid man and he's a fearful man and he cannot teach me even though I'm willing to listen. He's too much afraid of what other people will say. Don't look at them, look at me. I want to learn. And because I want to learn, teach me everything that the Lord has given you to teach me. That was Jesus Christ. He was not afraid of the people around him. Therefore, he cared, he cared not for any man. For thou regardest not the person of men. That's the kind of teacher he was. And that's why he was effective. And we're told in John chapter 8. John chapter 8, everybody recognized him, he was teacher. John chapter 8, I'm reading from verse 2. And early in the morning, he came again into the temple, and all the people came unto him, and he sat and taught them. And he settled down, and he taught them. And he composed himself and calmed down, and he taught them. And he settled everything, and focused all the attention on the teaching of the word of God. And he taught them. Oh, I pray that God will make us teachers like this. Amen. That this time, the impact of Jesus and the influence of Jesus will so come upon you that you will settle, you will know there's no other thing to do. Be a teacher that has come from God. And then you are able to teach the people. In verse 28, they said Jesus unto them, When ye have lifted up the Son of Man, then shall ye know that I am he. And that I do nothing of myself, but as my Father has taught me, I speak these things. What do you learn from there? As my Father has taught me, so I speak these things. He was teachable, that's why I became a teacher come from God. We are not going to be effective teachers except we ourselves are teachable. He was taught by the Father. And because he was taught by the Father, and he heard the Father, he listened to the Father, he accepted the word of the Father, then he became the teacher sent from God. In Matthew chapter 26, I'm reading from verse 55. Matthew chapter 26, verse 55. In that same hour said Jesus unto the multitudes, Are ye come out as against a thief with swords and staves for to take me? I sat daily with you teaching. I sat daily with you teaching. I sat daily with you teaching. Why did Jesus do so much in three and a half years? Oh, because he didn't limit his teaching to Sunday. He didn't limit his teaching to Monday. He didn't limit his preaching to Thursday. I sat daily, every day. If you did that, there will be somebody that will call you and pull you by your, by, your, by your coat and say, take it easy. Which day do you rest? Why are you doing this in every day? Are you going to finish the whole job in one year? Take it easy. That's what they say. 
but you know jesus christ said i did it daily i sat with you daily any day he wasn't sitting and teaching them it was a day that was lost it means he will never miss a day like that he'll get up there was a synagogue somewhere a temple somewhere a mountainside somewhere a power somewhere an open open air somewhere he went everywhere every day he was teaching and you say how could he do that oh well he did that in the strength of the lord and he's passing that across to us as well that we will do exactly the same thing and actually the disciples followed after that and they just went every day teaching the word of god and then i bring it to you as well that you are leaders and the lord has brought you here don't wait for the day of meeting before you teach look at jesus christ in that verse 55 i sat daily with you teaching in the temple and you lay no hands on me as you look at the ministry of jesus and how jesus taught what do you learn number one he taught without fear without favor he taught without fear without favor if you are going to be like jesus you'll teach without fear without favor look up here there's no crowd you can gather together there'll be you know there'll be good people there there'll be bad people there there will be people there their marriages are right there are some from here their marriages are not right there will be people that, no matter what you say if you're going to preach the word of god it will strike at somebody there there's no way you can avoid that and if you're you know so timid and fearful and you want to favor this and fear that one you'll never be a teacher that will transform the lives of people but number one jesus christ taught without fear without favor now when you're teaching whatever you mention if you mention drinking alcohol there'll be somebody in a crowd of five thousand that's a drunkard if you mention stealing there'll be somebody in a crowd of five thousand that is stealing if you mention adultery there'll be somebody in a crowd of five thousand that is committing adultery if you mention whatever you mention there'll be somebody in a crowd of five even one thousand there'll be somebody in a crowd of just one thousand that is not living right if you're afraid what are they going to say you're not going to say anything you better go ahead then and give yourself the freedom and cut off all the cords that are tying you and pulling you back and teach like jesus christ number one without fear without favor number two he taught with focus and freshness you see jesus christ when he taught he had a focus i'm going to bring these people from satan from the hand of satan i'm going to bring them unto god i'm going to lift up these people from the valley in which they are i'm going to bring them to the mountain top of glory i'm going to take these people away from themselves i'm going to bring them to the lord almighty he had a focus when he taught and because of that focus that's why he did what he did in those three and a half years and then there was freshness upon him it was not stale it was not teaching even when he said the same thing he said before it was still fresh he taught with focus and freshness how you should be able to learn from the lord as leaders that when you stand up and when you preach the word of god there'll be focus there'll be freshness number three he taught with firmness and finality with firmness and finality did you listen to the lord jesus christ this is what he said before but i say unto you and after what he said there's no other thing to say with finality we ought to teach we ought to tell the people the truth in such a way that uh, we're not telling them something that well maybe there's an alternative there's no alternative to salvation there's no alternative to holiness without holiness no man shall see the lord there's no alternative to the power of the holy ghost there's no alternative to the second coming of the lord behold i come again you teach with firmness and finality and when you are taught the people know that this is the watch of the lord and it is firm and it is final number four he taught with faith and forbearance he taught with faith and forbearance yes he knew that he was slow to learn many of them but he kept on believing and he knew that the change will come the transformation will come maybe peter is not getting it now but he will get it later he will he must get it and he was teaching with faith he had hope in the lord and faith in the lord that this what he was teaching will bear fruit and he was teaching with forbearance he bore with them he was patient with them and then number five he taught freely and fully freely and fully and you'll see when jesus was teaching there was no inhibition 
There was freedom. There was liberty. He taught freely and he taught fully. He wasn't keeping anything back. And then number six, he taught frequently and fervently. Frequently and fervently. That's how Jesus taught. Frequently, every day, he was teaching them. The disciples were with him. Have you noticed that the disciples uh, did not uh, limit their questions to the Sabbath daytime? Have you noticed that the disciples did not limit their questions to when the crowd gathered? Have you noticed that they asked the question anytime? Anytime. Because he was available to teach them and to lead them into the fullness of truth every time. And when he taught, he taught with fire coming with his soul. He taught stirring of the people. In fact, what did the people say? They said, he's all over there, all over jury. And when he taught, he stirred up the people. That's referring to his prophecy in teaching. Let's look at Luke chapter, five, chapter 23 verse 5. Luke chapter 23 verse 5. And they were the more fierce saying, he stirred up the people. Teaching throughout all jury. He stirred up the people. When he teaches, they took a decision. When he teaches, their emotion was aroused. When he teaches, the purpose and the fire aroused in them. We have to do something. Either get rid of him or get rid of our sin. He stirred up the people because he taught frequently and he taught fervently. Number seven, he taught faithfully and he taught fearlessly. He taught faithfully. I will come to the presence of the Lord himself at this time. And we want to allow him to open the pages of scripture. And to open the mind of God unto us. And to open the windows of heaven. And drop within us doctrine, teaching, instruction. Like rain and dew. And the freshness of the instruction coming from on high. To come within us. And take all the dryness, all the weariness and all the tiredness spiritually. Take everything away and make us come alive through the teaching of the Lord in Jesus name. And I pray it will happen in Jesus name. As we come to the presence of the Lord, it brings life eternal. When you listen to him, it brings spiritual growth. When you listen to him, it brings fulfillment and fullness. I come to point number two. Leaning on his promise. In Matthew chapter 5, I'm reading from verses 1 and 2 again. Matthew chapter 5, verses 1 and 2. And seeing the multitudes, he went up into a mountain. And when he was set, his disciples came unto him. And he opened his mouth and he taught them. What's the difference between Jesus Christ, the teacher come from God, and Moses, a great teacher too, and David, a great teacher too, and Daniel, a great teacher too? What's the difference between them? When the words of Jesus came out, it came out with the power to accomplish what the Lord expected. He taught them. They gave them knowledge, they gave them instruction It was now in their hand to find how they are going to be able to make it To obey the word of God they are teaching them In the case of Jesus, he had the teaching And he had the transforming power And therefore when they listened to his teaching They relied on him And as they relied on him Then there was the power to carry out what the Lord Jesus was teaching them. We need to lean on the promise of God. And what are the promises we have? Deuteronomy chapter 31, verse 12. Deuteronomy chapter 31. I'm reading from verse 12. Gather the people together. Gather the people together. The men and women and children. Teach everyone. Those, they're too young to learn. Gather the children with them. Gather the women with them. Oh, the women, they are, many of them are semi illiterate. Gather them together. Gather the men along with them. The men, they are too busy trying to get, make ends meet for their family. Gather them together. The men, the women, as well as the children, and a stranger that is within thy gates. That they may hear and that they may learn. That's the purpose. That they may hear and that they may learn. And fear the Lord your God. And observe to do all the, this law. The reason why we teach is not just to fill our heads with knowledge. It's to transfer that thing 
uh, from the head about 18 inches down into the heart that they may learn and observe to do all the words of this law and to do that we have to lean upon him rely upon him we have to do everything and we cannot do anything not to talk about everything in the power of the human mind we have to do it in the power of the lord that's why we rely on him and lean upon him reckon that it's possible because we have faith in him in philippians chapter 4 verse 9 philippians chapter 4 verse 9 those things which ye have both learned you learn it first and received and heard and seen in me do that's the bottom line that's the goal it's not what you know it's what you do it's not what you have learned it's how you live it's what you put into practice of the things you have learned you know that's the difference between education and training education gives you knowledge education gives you information education gives you instruction teaching develops you to practice to do training rather training develops you to do and so that's the reason we need to join education or training not just education and when you think about many of us we have the education in the word of god we have the instruction the information in the word of god but then to now have the training and the power and the strength to be able to do all that the lord has called us to do to do it to practice it so that you've gone beyond just being educated in the word of god you've gone to training now you know how to do what the lord demands of you it says in that verse 9 those things which you have both learned and received and heard and seen in me do you see that process and wouldn't that be the process that disciples saw they learned in the presence of jesus they learned something they received something they heard something and they saw something and that's what they want to go out and do and the god of peace shall be with you Amen. then we're told in john chapter 13 john chapter 13 we're reading verse 17 john 13 verse 17 if you know these things if you know these things up here if you do them if you do them and that's why uh, you, you know a, a christian cannot just uh, do like uh, we do at school cram the uh the, the message cram me, you know memorize the message memorize the sermon memorize the verses that's good but that won't do it just having it in the head to cram it up doesn't solve the problem it has to be transferred and move our hand to do something and move our feet to go somewhere and move our mouth to say the right thing and move our our enthusiasm move our personality out of where we are into where we ought to be the watch of god we're hearing should push us and motivate us and lead us to do to do something that's why the lord said if he know these things that's not the end if he know these things that's not the ultimate that's not the goal it's just a means to an end if he know these things happy blessed are ye if ye do them the things you have heard how are you how are you doing them if we will measure what you know if it were possible to put everything you know on the scale of a balance and then what you do in comparison with what you know if we were to put it on the other scale of the balance does your balance stay in equilibrium or is it so much heavy here heavy knowledge but light practice but the lord wants us to bring everything together that what you know 
and what you do will come to the same level and the scales of the balance will be at the same level you know it you do it that means you pray that means you have the grace of god in your life that means you have the supernatural influence in your life and you are able to do if you know these things appear you if you do them john chapter 15 verses 4 and 5 john chapter 15 verse 4 abide in me and i in you as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself except it abide in the vine no more can ye except ye abide in me that's relying on the lord leaning upon the lord receiving the grace from the lord and the strength from the lord to be able to do what he's teaching us in verse 5 i am the vine and ye are the branches he that abideth in me and i in him the same bringeth forth much fruit for without me ye can do nothing yes just learning from him how many people you know run to christ and then they rush to the lord and they learn and learn and learn and then they are not able to do you know why they're not relying on the lord the teaching of christ is supernatural teaching and to carry it out we need supernatural power in your life to be able to do it that's why we lean on him we rely on him but is it possible to be obedient to the lord yes by grace it's possible and for you this year possibilities have come Amen. reality has now come Amen. and it will be done we will obey the word of the lord and now we can do it because we have christ in us and we're leaning and relying upon christ in philippians chapter 4 verse 13 philippians chapter 4 verse 13 i'm waiting for you to open it philippians chapter 4 verse 13 can you read it out loud once you go you're reading it like you know those newcomers that come to my crusade as if you know they're not sure of how they're reading now read like leaders in the leadership strategy congress once you go you know whenever you hear the word of god and the devil is trying to tell you that's tall then go back to that i can i can do it i can do all things through christ which strengthens me strengthens me he's strengthening me all the time he strengthened me yesterday and he's strengthening me today and he continues to strengthen me tomorrow you can be all things through christ who strengthens you you can do all things through christ who strengthens you you can obey every word of god through christ who strengthens you i can do all things through christ who strengthens me don't talk about impossibility in your life you hear the word of god don't, don't go back like those people who can do this of course we can do it i said we can do it yeah. and we're going to do it in jesus name here Paul the Apostle said, I can't, I can't. Other people say, I can't. Remove that T, I can't. I said, I can't. I can. Every day, I can. Every, day I, can. Every time I can. Every time, I can. In all situations, I can. That's faith, that's faith, that's faith. When you hear the word of God and the devil is trying to tell, this is high, this is great, this is marvelous. Who can do this? I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. It has happened already. Amen. In Romans chapter 8, leaning on his promise. Romans chapter 8, verse 3 and verse 4. For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh god sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin condemned sin in the flesh that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit there's a power now that is working within us that power throughout this year will walk in your life first thessalonians chapter 2 verse 13 first thessalonians chapter 2 verse 13 for this cause also thank we god without ceasing 
because when you received the word of God which ye heard of us ye received it not as the word of men but as it is in truth the word of God which effectually walketh also in you that believe which effectually walketh in you that believe when you believe this work is going to work in your life Amen. Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20 now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that walketh where the question to ask yourself is as you come to this congress and you hear the word of god and you come to learn in his presence do you take that word and then you become afraid and say but i cannot do this do you realize there's a power from the lord coming along with the word that walketh in you and because that word works within you whatever you are hearing from the word of god you can say although this word is higher than the level i am now this word is greater than the things i've achieved up to this time and this word is demanding of me much much more than i've ever done in my life but thank god i'm going to pray on this word and i believe that i'm praying unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that i ask or think and then it says according 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 to the power that walketh in me that power will walk in you the purpose of learning is doing and the power for doing is Christ in us. We come to point number three, living by his precepts. We come to Matthew chapter 5, verses 1 and 2. Matthew chapter 5, verses 1 and 2. And seeing the multitudes, he went up into a mountain. And when he sat, when he was set, his disciples came unto him. And he opened his mouth and taught them. We know what he taught. We know when he taught. We know where he taught. The question is, why did he teach them? Why did he teach them? He taught them so that they would live by what he was teaching them. And why are you here? We know that you are there. We know who you are, your leaders. We know where you are. You are the Congress. And we know when it is you are there. Look at us here. It's January, um, you know, the first week. But the reason is why. Why are you there? You have, you have attended retreat now. Why do you come here? You have attended workers meeting. Why do you come here? The why is what you need to find out. You know, there are people that attend meetings that don't ask any reason why. They just attend. They just attend. But you need to ask yourself, why am I here? Why am I listening to all these things? It is when you answer that question to yourself. And then you say, this is the reason why I'm here. That's the time that the thing will bear fruit in your life. If you don't ask the reason why you are there, you just listen and then you go away. The retreat will remain. You'll be like the workers. General retreat is like crusade. Crusade is like workers meeting to you. And the workers meeting is like, uh, you know, congress to you. Everything is the same. But why are you here? Do you expect to get something different? Something higher? something deeper something that will turn you around something that will make you the minister that you ought to be the reason why we come to the congress is to get the word and then grow up and live and minister by his precept it tells us in matthew chapter 7 reading from verse 24 matthew chapter 7 verse 24 therefore whosoever heareth these says of mine and doeth them is in the doing Whosoever heareth these things of mine and doeth them. Of the things you have written down in your notes, which, one does, which ones do you plan to do? How do you plan to do them? How do you want to carry them out? Learning about evangelism, are you going to do it? Learning about obedience to the heavenly vision, how are you going to do it? It's a doing. 
It's not just the hearing. He that heareth these words of mine and doeth them. I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell not. Your house will not fall. Amen. Your spiritual house will stand in the time of the storm in Jesus' name. Amen. And then it says, For it was founded upon a rock. Ah, it was founded upon a rock. Somebody wants to build. And it brings all the blocks, all the stones, all the cement, all the sand. Another one also wants to build. And it brings exactly the same blocks, the same cement, the same sand, everything the same. But this other one, when he came, he started putting block upon block. Doctrine upon doctrine. Creed upon creed. Instruction upon instruction. Message upon message. But you didn't dig. To dig into your own heart. And to pray it in. He has all the blocks and all the messages. He has all the cement and the sermons. He has all the sand as well as you know, all the precepts. He has them on paper. But he doesn't dig deep inside. But the other fellow... Having the same doctrine, having the same message, having the same truth that we have learned together, he digs deep. He says, Lord, I dig into my heart. And I see this ought to be done. This is where I am. Lord, do something. My relationship with my wife, I dig into my heart. My relationship with my husband, I dig in my heart. My relationship in my place of work with my co-workers, I dig into my heart. I shouldn't be saying what I'm saying. I shouldn't be doing what I'm doing. I shouldn't be acting the way I'm acting. You are digging deep into your heart and you're putting the words inside. And then, by the time you get up, you are barely able to talk. Because you have dug so deep in your heart and the word has set you out. And then the other fellow, you know, he says, what's the matter with you? Is it not the same doctrine that you are learning? I will put everything on the notes. Compare your notes with my notes. Is your note greater than my notes? I don't have everything. No, I'm not all my blocks here. Your blocks are there, but they are just on the surface. It's when we dig into the heart and we dig into the word and the grace of God goes deep in our heart. That's when it's going to do good in our heart. That's why I'm pleading with you as we come to this congress that when you hear the word of God, you dig in in your heart and you dig into the word. Say, Lord, this one, this congress will be different. I am going to do this one. He that heard these things of mine and he doeth them, I will liken it to a wise man which buildeth his house upon a rock. And the rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat upon that house and it fell not for it was founded upon a rock and everyone that heard these things of mine and doeth them not everyone that heard these things of mine oh I was here last year since congress started I've been one of the foundation members I've been coming all the time I've been hearing it every time in fact I see about my notes at home uh -huh. notes he that heard these sayings of mine and doeth them not. He says, I will like him. He's not doing it. He shall be, he shall be likened unto a foolish man, which built his house upon the sand. You know, when Jesus uses the word foolish, to really, you know, get stirred up and do something. Because Jesus uses words very carefully. And it says, if you are just coming and coming, and you are not doing it, you are like it to a foolish man. A foolish man. You live all this time, and you come here. Isn't that foolish? You don't have any mind to do it. And you leave your business behind, and then you come here, and you don't have any mind to do it. Isn't that foolish? And then you leave all the other things you could have been doing at least to benefit yourself physically, naturally. And you leave everything behind and you go all through this long journey. And then you take all these, all these rough roads. And you go through the dangers of the road and dangers in the air and dangers on the sea. And then you come here and you do nothing about what you are hearing. Isn't that truly foolishness? 
you hear about the gate of heaven being open and the gate is open before you hear and the Lord says go in and you do nothing you don't go in isn't that foolish you hear how your ministry will succeed how the power of God will come into your life and the power is right there at your fingertips stretch out your hand and get it and you fold your hand put your hand at the back is that not foolish you hear how you are going to please the Lord how the Lord will take a dynamite of the Holy Ghost and put something into your heart and then you'll be a changed man and it could happen just like that even from tonight and you do nothing about that isn't that foolishness really he that here this is of mine and doest them not shall be likened to a foolish man that build which buildeth his house upon the sand and the rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat upon that house and it fell why do I want to waste my time building a house that I know is going to collapse? Why do you want to waste your time building a ministry that you know is going to collapse? That you know the wind is not going to blow? And the wind is going to come and the rain is going to come and the flood is going to come and everything is going to collapse. See the man sweating and he's building a house without foundation. And he's doing exactly after the other man laid the foundation. In fact, he's even faster than the other man. He is more energetic than the other man. He is spending all his resources building a house and he knows it's just a matter of time. This house is going to collapse and he doesn't care. How could you do that? Because Jesus said, if you hear the word of God, you take all the trouble, you buy a good Bible, you buy good notes, you buy good pay, you deny yourself for a lot of things and you come over here, you hear the word of God and you don't do it. That that's going to be foolishness. And that the house will fall and great was the fall of it. My house will not fall. That means you'll do something about it. In John chapter 8. John chapter 8, reading from verse 30. John chapter 8 verse 30 and he spake these words as he spake these words many believed on him and said then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him if ye continue in my word then are ye my disciples indeed and ye shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free you will be free in Luke chapter 8 Luke chapter 8 I'm reading from verse 15 Luke 8 Verse 15, but that on the good ground are they which in an honest and good heart. Honest and good heart. In an honest and good heart. Having heard the word, keep it, obey it, do it, and bring forth fruit with patience. In John chapter 14, John chapter 14. From verse 21, John 14, verse 21. He that has my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me. And he that loveth me shall be loved of my Father. And I will love him and will manifest myself unto him. What a great promise that the Lord says when you have his word and you keep that word, you are conscious of that word. You say, this is the word my lord gave me this is the word my lord taught me i'm going to hold it dear unto my heart and i'm going to keep the word if the lord is precious to you his word will be precious to you if the word if the lord is dear to you his word will be dear to you if you don't want to lose the fellowship of the lord you'll not want to do without the watch of the lord he that has my word and he keeps my word and he girds my word and he obeys my word and he lives according to my word he it is that truly really loves me and then my father and i will love him and we will manifest and reveal ourselves unto him revelation chapter 22 in Revelation chapter 22, reading from verse 14. Revelation 22, verse 14. Blessed are they that hear his commandments. Is that it? What does it say? Read it yourself. Read it out. Praise the Lord. Why would anyone just want to come here 
and not enter in through the gate into the city of the living God. Why would anybody want to come? Want to share with us? Why would anybody want to be present here for a whole week? And at the end of the week, then you are not able to enter into the city of the living God. And to enter through the gate into the city of the living God is to do the work of God. To obey the commandments of God. Blessed are they that do his commandments. Living by his precepts. That do his commandments. That they may have right to the tree of life. And may enter in through the gates into the city. Matthew chapter 7 now. In Matthew chapter 7. Reading from verse 21. Matthew chapter 7 verse 21. Not everyone that says unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. What a sober, sobering statement. Not everyone that says unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth. Notice, not he that did. If God were to just rate us on our deeds, when we first got converted, we might be the greatest in heaven. When you first got converted, and the fire was burning in your soul, when you first got converted, and the excitement of knowing the Lord was very fresh, when you first, when you first knew the Lord, and you took the word of God, you'll not allow anything to fall to the ground, and you did the will of God. Every time I ask the Lord, Give me your word on this. I'm going to ask what the Lord wants me to do. And that's why we're very conscious of the presence of the Lord, of the will of God. I'll not do anything that God will not approve of. If God were to judge us on what we did in the past, it would be great. But it's what we did before. But it says, He that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven, the people that have the commitment and they say, this is a new day. This is a new year. And the Lord may come any time. And the judgment of the Lord is not going to depend on what I did before, what I'm, what I'm doing now. He that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? Ministry. Ministry is great. And ministry is wonderful. Preaching is wonderful. Ministry is wonderful. But we're not going to get to heaven because of ministry. We're going to be rewarded on the basis of the ministry. But you need to get to heaven before you get the reward. What's the point? If somebody has the reward there for ministry, but then his life did not qualify him to even enter heaven to get the reward. That's what we're talking about. It says, many will say unto me that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name have done many wonderful works. You know, sometimes you do something in the ministry, and people congratulate you. Shake your wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Ah, don't let that deceive you. Don't let that deceive you. It's not just the wonder, the height of the ministry, whatever it is you are doing. They would have said it did many wonderful works. And then when I profess unto them, I never knew you depart from me, ye that work iniquity. The Lord is calling us and the Lord is saying, we have come here to this Congress. And we have come to learn to grow in his presence. I'm making up my mind. This conference, this Congress would contribute to my spiritual growth. And I'm going to allow the word to do something in me that the word will get me up, move me forward, and do something that I've not done for the Lord before. And this word of God will work in your life. Amen. You will do something. Amen. This will make a mark a difference in your life. You will not just hear, you will do. Can I have a good amen? amen. Why don't you rise up then and commit yourself to this? That Lord will come in the unity of the faith so that we'll be able to do what you're calling us to do. 
open your mouth talk to the lord you came to learn you came to learn you came to learn and the lord wants you to really learn and learn to do and learn to do learn to do do the word Is the people that do, not just the people that hear. To do it. To do it. Learning in his presence. He was a teacher follow out his pattern follow out his steps follow out his example follow out his model and in your own opportunity teach without fear of favor You're building, don't build on the sand. Dig down deep in your heart. Don't just put the blocks of teaching, the blocks of messages. Don't just put them on the notes. Dig down deep into your heart and build. Teach with focus, learn with focus and freshness. Teach with firmness and finality. Don't shake in the teaching. Be like Christ. Be sure of what you are teaching and teach it authoritatively. Teach with faith and forbearance. And teach freely and fully. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. Don't be so intimidated, you cannot open your mouth and talk. And don't be so fearful, you cannot open your mouth and pray. And teach frequently and fervently. Teach faithfully. And teach fearlessly. And lean on the promise of the Lord. Abide in him. Let his word of promise abide in you. And know that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, who keeps on strengthening me day by day, moment by moment. The strength of the Lord is there. we can because it lives within us we will because his strength and grace abide within us i can do all things through christ who strengthens me let the word you are going to be hearing at this time work mightily in your heart Accept the word. Believe the word. Stand on this unchanging word. Let it change you and transform you. And make a commitment to the Lord. I will do the word. 
I will. I will. That's the secret of learning to grow in the presence of the Lord until we all come the unity of the faith unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Make a commitment to the Lord. I can do. I will do. I must do. I can do all things. I will do all things. I must do all things. I can do all things through Christ. I will do all things through Christ. I must do all things through Christ. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I will do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I must do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Lean on the strength of the Lord. He has abundant and sufficient grace to help you be who he calls you to be and to help you do what he has called you to do. Pastor Dada, he has been a father to me. I don't start crying. Okay, um, I remember I came here without um, scholarship to Harvard University. The first year wasn't easy, but I got a grant that paid half of my tuition. But then from second year, I got like five different scholarships from my department. I just thank God, third year, the same thing. And I thank God because I'll be graduating in May. I didn't have to stay back to the I just thank God for all his provisions. I just bless you.